Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and in the series of Law of Torts, we were discussing whether it is Law of Tort or Law of Torts in the last three videos. And in that series, this is my last video where we are going to understand what does Indians has to say, whether it is Law of Tort as far India is concerned or whether it is Law of Torts. We know what Frederick Fulock has to say. We know what Winfield has to say. We know what Sir John Solomon has to say. But what are we saying as Indians? What does our court say whether it is law of tort or law of torts? Let us try and understand that with the help of decided cases. Not taking much of your time. Let's get into the first slide. Yes, we by now know what Sir Frederick Pollock has to say or Percy Henry Winfield has to say or Sir John Solomon has to say. But prior to getting into Indian context, it is necessary for us to just quickly recap whatever we have learned till here. Sir Frederick Pollock or Percy Henry Winfield believed in wider theory of thought and Percy Henry Winfield gave an analogy of a tree just like a tree which will have a lot of branches and the already defined thoughts are the branches which we are already having but that doesn't mean that we cannot get new thought or a new branch in a particular tree. Just like a tree gets a new branch, there can be a new tort defined in a court hall, which is what Sir Frederick Pollock or Percy Henry Winfield believing in. So it is law of tort and there can be new tort. So that way it becomes wider theory. Whereas Sir John Solomon said, the tort is like pigeonhole. There are pigeonholes and in each pigeonhole, there is a pigeon just like that we have already defined torts like negligence, assault, defamation, nuisance, malicious prosecution, all of that and whatever comes in inside the court hall as a civil wrong needs to be fixed in one of the pigeonhole which is already available or one of the tort which is already been defined. That way this becomes the narrower theory or the pigeonhole theory which is the limiting part of Taught and it is known as law of torts where there are already defined torts available and whatever tort comes inside the court hall needs to be recognized with one of the available torts which is what Sir John Solomon has to say. These are the backup for wider theory and the narrower theory or the pigeonhole theory. We have discussed them in detail in my second and third video in this series. So I'm not getting into too much of details about case laws, etc. Let's get into Indian context from the next slide. Dr. Williams very beautifully sums up the controversy between law of tort versus the law of torts or the wider theory versus the narrower theory. He says, and I quote, the first school has shown that rules of liability are very wide. The second school has shown that some rules of absence of liability are very wide. Neither school has shown that there is any general rule, whether of liability or of non-liability, to cover novel cases that have not hereinto received the attention of the courts. That way he says, both the theories are not conclusive. That means there is always openings for discussion on these theories. That's how he sums up. Going on, to see any kind of development in law, it may be thoughts or any kind of law, there needs to be three important activism. If they are available, then there will be progressive laws or new laws coming into space. What are these three activisms? It is the activism of people. It is the activism in judiciary and it is the activism in the legislature. When people are giving a lot of contribution for the new laws or change in the existing laws, that is the activism of people. And when there are a lot of happenings happens inside the court hall, that is the activism in the judiciary. And when legislature brings a lot of changes in the existing laws or brings new laws, that is the activism in the legislature. Where are we seeing such activism more frequently. It's in the countries like UK and USA etc. We see such activisms more regularly 
but India is not one among that. So that way our contribution to legal fraternity or jurisprudence or taught whatsoever is not that great because we don't see this kind of activism regularly. Saying so, we are not neutral. We have also contributed to law of thought and we in some ways said that it is law of thought and not law of thoughts. What are the cases which said that this is law of thought and not law of thoughts or what are our contribution to the world of thought? Let's see them in the case laws. I am discussing two very important case laws here. The first one is pre-independent case law and the other one is independent India case law. Now this is 1945 case law that is Lala Pannalal versus Kasturi Chand Ramji. Now this is the case law which gave birth to a new thought by name malicious house search. In this case law there was a discussion as to how a house search need to be conducted. Now there was nothing clear at that particular timing and there was a lot of discussion whether to consider this as a tort or not as it was not a defined tort but finally with all the courts coming in together and saying that this was not the way to be done a house search they have agreed that yes we have to accept this as a tort and that tort can be named as malicious house search. That way we gave a new branch as Winfield says so that proves that India has believed in law of thought though we have most of the time dependent on common laws or the law of thoughts here is one contribution coming pre-independent India. We have one very important another case which I am going to discuss in my next slide. This case law yeah we are discussing it for the first time here in this slide but this is not the end. We are going to discuss it 100 more times maybe when we discuss through law of thought. This is a very 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 important case law that is MC Mehta versus Union of India. Now this case law gave birth to absolute liability. Till then we heard the concept of strict liability which was the contribution of Reliance versus Fletcher but this case law gave birth to absolute liability. And I will be selfish to read out few very important observation made by Justice P. Bhagavati. The first part says law has to grow in order to satisfy the needs of the fast changing society and keep abreast with the economic developments taking place in the country. That way see law of thought cannot be left over where it is or to be continued with wherever it is. We have to see the progressive society, progressive economic progressive industrial nature of the society all of that everything is progressing that way law also need to be progressive and we have to go along with it. Now the green font if you observe that he says we cannot allow our judicial thinking to be constricted by reference to the law as it prevails in England or for the matter of that in any other foreign country. Now if we are constraining ourselves to the common laws or any other laws which are available in other countries that way we are not evolving as a country which is contributing to law or the jurisprudence. So that way he says no we should not constrain ourselves and if you see the red font it says we in India cannot hold our hands back and venture to evolve anew. He is very clear he is very precise that we cannot keep waiting for others to give something and just to follow it. If we do that then it becomes law of thoughts. Instead we also try to give something new. A venture is a dangerous journey, risky journey. We don't know what is exactly going to happen but sometimes we have to take that risk and we have to contribute to the world. That is what Justice P. Bhagavati very strongly believed and very clearly brought in his judgment and that judgment gave birth to a new liability that is absolute liability in thought. So what is the conclusion? We in India have contributed to the law of thoughts and we have given new thought that way it has become the follower of wider theory or we can comfortably say that it is law of thought. Now the discussion will not going to end there will be always discussion whether to we have to limit it to law of thoughts or we have to see it 
as law of thought. Thoughts are taught whatsoever for the examination purpose. You guys have got sufficient content in my four videos. And with that belief, I'm handing over this presentation to Nishan. And never forget to follow the playlist link in the video description where you get all the videos related to law of thought. Wow! These are some colorful dinosaurs. I think I recognize few of them. There is a pterodactyl, a triceratops, a T-Rex and many others. They must be having fun. Whatever. With that, I am concluding this session. Please subscribe our channel. Please like, share and comment our videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.